In this next chapter, we're going to be talking about working with the Type tool inside of Photoshop CS6. To begin with, we'll start exploring working with Point Type. To follow along, you can open up the Killer Sites U4.psd, which can be found if you go to the mini bridge inside of your source files in the Killer Sites folder. As well, if you want to follow along with the files that we've been working with up to this point, you can also open up Killer Sites 1. I happen to have both of them open here, one that has all the type that we're going to be using and one that has no type at all. You'll notice that I've zoomed in to 100% on Killer Sites number 1, whereas Killer Sites 4 is at a lower magnification. Let's start by looking at Killer Sites number 1. There's nothing in here, and if you look at your files inside of the layer palette, you'll notice that we just have the logo, some sticker information, the banner, and the simple background info. Well, within the logo, we may want to include some type inside of this. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is to click on the Type tool, or there is a keyboard shortcut of T. As soon as you do that, you may notice that there is a lot of options available right up at the top, all for use with the Type tool. If you just click on the stage, what you're going to end up with is Point Type. And Point Type is kind of interesting. It's generally used for short blocks of text, not large paragraphs. And the reason being is, if I were to just come in here and type a bunch of information, and even if I use the spacebar to make more than one word, we still would have all of our text on one line. In order to separate that text, I would have to position my cursor at a specific point and then press the return key so that it would go onto another line. But I don't want to do that in this scenario. So notice I'm going to select all of this text just by using my type tool to click inside the text area and to go all the way back to the beginning. If I delete that, you can see that I still have active type here. Let's write in the word Killer Sites University. Now I'm working with the font called Bebis Nua. You can work with any font that you like. Notice here. As soon as I move my cursor away from the type area, it turns back to the Move tool. This is useful because it allows me to now reposition my text wherever I want it to be. This Type tool is great because I can also make selections and turn them into different colors. In order to do that, all I've got to do is to come up to the top and click on this little color box right here. I can choose from colors by sliding along this way or I could even use the eyedropper tool to come in here and choose a specific shade of green. You can change the size of your font by selecting it and choosing a specific number by clicking here, or you could select the type and change this number yourself to another one. Another thing you could do is to just position your cursor right under the T's that you see right here. And you'll notice that it gives you the finger with an arrow on the left and the right hand side. This is something that you could use to decrease or increase the size of the font. I'm going to leave it at 50. To accept the changes that you've made to your text, the way to exit this text area is to press the keyboard shortcut Command Return on a Mac or Control Enter on a PC. As soon as you do that, that allows you to work with the Type tool again and to create yet another piece of text. So if I want to create another point type, I'll just come here and click. I'm going to write out the word THE. To choose a font, all you need to do is to choose one from your list, as we've seen, or we can select the font here and just start typing out the font that you need. If you know its name, you'll be able to just write it out as I am right here. Once you have the font that you want, 
press return and that'll make the text field be active. I'm going to reduce this size down to something like 20, 29. Now if I move my cursor away from there, I can then reposition my text exactly where I want it to be. That's still a little too big, so I'm going to choose something like 23 or 24. I'll also select it and come in here and choose the same gray color that I'm using. want these words to be in lowercase letters, so I'll just make sure that I'm not pressing anything else when I type them in. Now, to exit, I'll press Command Return or Control Enter. In this stage, you can see that in your layer palette, you happen to have Killer Sites University written out right here, as well as the word the written here. To make that text active again, you can choose your type tool and click inside of it, or you can also double click the text right here. Double clicking the T will allow you to select the text that you can see. There are more options than the ones that we see up here. In order to access those options, we can open up the character window. This can be accessed here on the side from your window panel or in the window menu here under character or you could even just come to this point right here and access the character and paragraph windows. If you wish to make a change within your character palette, that's easy enough to do. Simply in the same way as we saw before, you can change the size of your file, but you can also make some other changes. For example, you can change the amount of space between each of your selected characters, or in this case, we're going to set the tracking for all of our characters. You can choose from the list, or you can also use the slider as we saw before to make those pieces of text tighter or to increase the amount of space between them. If you wanted to increase the space between just two characters, you would have to click between two characters and then you could make your metrics here by setting your kerning. This could also be increased. Notice that only affects the two characters where my cursor is. At that point, I could accept this by committing the current edits by pressing this little check mark. That is the exact same thing as pressing Command Return or Control Return on a PC. I actually want my text to be closer together, so Command Z, I'm going to undo that. Now, text in this fashion can also have layer effects applied to them. So just as we saw in the previous videos dealing with layer effects, you can come in here and you could say, hey, I'd like to bevel and emboss that particular file. And then you could choose from a number of different ways of doing this. Set the depth, and you could come in here and also apply a drop shadow if you wish with a specific size and blur depending on exactly what it is that you're trying to do. Now come back in the next video and I'm going to show you a little bit more about working with the type tool but this time we're going to be looking at paragraph text.